<clears throat> hello, hello. Hopefully you guys can see me and hear me. Give it just a second. Oh, this is going to be logging too. So you guys can see and hear me. Give me a five by five. Hey, thanks, Mr. Landfill. Appreciate that. Uh, it doesn't look like that's going to work either. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, my Saturday night live stream here at the Grafted Branch Homestead. Uh, tonight is one of those nights where I'm every difficulty that can happen is happening. Um, so unfortunately, I'm down my second camera. So no, no uh, start like that. And there's just a lot of things going on. My computer doesn't want to download or upload any of the videos. And it decided to start doing so about 10 minutes before the stream. So uh, most of my content's out and I lost my special guest. But we're going to go, go with tonight anyways. And I got a few things for you still. And this com other computer's not working either. Okay. Let me just go ahead and shut that. So it's good to see you guys. I hope you guys are doing okay. It is an extremely, extremely windy day here um, in the Southwest desert. And so the wind is a pain. <laughs> All it means is extra work and extra uh, picking up. Hey, Renegade, good to see you. And so we got Verna's in here, was first in here. Thank you very much. And Mr. Landfill, Steve says greetings and to me and fans from Mississippi Delta. Buster, hello, good to see you. And then Renegade, yeah, there's a lot of those today. I don't know. And if today's stream goes off because of the wind, I uh, I apologize. But so I lost most all the all the stuff that was planned for tonight. But I do have a couple good things, and so we'll run through that really quick. But uh, first of all, welcome to anyone who knows me and is is back. Thank you for supporting me, giving me a little bit of your time on this Saturday evening. If you're new. Uh, my name is Matt with the Grafter Branch Homestead, and uh, we are learning skills here on our small little Southwest Desert Urban Homestead. Um, tonight's stream is going to be a short one, just because I don't have a whole lot, but I do have a, a bonus stream. So let me explain a little bit. Um, tonight's stream should be about 20 minutes long, I'm thinking. I have uh, two good planning tips, things I'm doing uh, that I want to share with you guys. And then just kind of, hey, there, Nikki, we got Nikki here, too. And then a little bit of what's going on. So it has been an extremely eventful, busy, kind of frustrating week. I don't know. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So this week, my kids have been on spring break. And I took some time off from work to help with that. It's also been both me and my wife's birthday uh, in the week here. It has been, you know, everyone's been in the house together. And it's, it's kind of been crazy there. Weather has been beautiful and nuts. I don't know if, if some of you may have seen, we did an impromptu live stream. We actually did a hike at the petroglyphs. And so that was awesome. That was, if I, if this, let me see here. Well, I don't think it's going to upload in time. I don't want to stop it from uploading everything because it finally just started, but I don't think it's going to upload in time for me to do footage. So it looks like it's doing it now though. So I'll have a late night tonight and hopefully there'll be some video of our petroglyph hike and then also um, me and my younger son Casey there went to an art installation earlier this week and that was a ton of fun and so I was going to show some clips of that um, but we may have to stay tuned for the video. Uh, let's see I, I don't have a camera to show the chickens either. Okay I'm going to go ahead and hop right into the two planning tips I had then I'll chat just for a few minutes. Tonight's stream is going to be very short. Then I'm going to hop off. Um, I'm going to give it about oh five, 10 minute break there just to kind of reset a little bit. And then I'm going to show something cool that I got actually for my birthday. And so I will restart with another live stream. It'll be one of the vertical live streams uh, for anyone that's curious at the end of this. And it will be setting up my heat press uh, system there. So good to see everyone. Sorry for the stream uh, didn't go as planned tonight. It seemed like uh, nothing nothing fell into place, but that's okay. I'm also not going to be able to set the camera to move over there to where my plants are. So I'm going to bring them over here and just hold them up. And I'm going to show what I wanted to talk about a little bit. Okay. So two plants in particular I want to talk about. And this is actually something that my wife um, taught me. 
if you want, you'll have to come over here. Okay, so my wife's going to join me in show. So it's very green, yes. Um, I was, was going to use the camera on my phone to set up over here on this table. So I can't do that because I'm having difficulties galore tonight. But if you want to scoot over here where I'm at or right next to me, maybe we can get you in and, and just show. So first of all, this is something we do with our pepper plants in particular, but it's done with a lot of other plants too. So thank you for joining. This is a spicy mom here joining us. So this is a good one. So this is one we're going to top. The one we did. We did. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. So I had a good example of that too. That's a good example of one we did. So basically what we're doing, and this is done with the pepper plants, but you there's other plants that it's done with too, but primarily we do it with peppers. Yeah. So like a lot of other, like the tomatoes, for example, and other, other plants, you can just pick the fruit off so that they, you know, make them wait to grow a little bigger before they actually start fruiting to save energy. But when it doesn't really work that much, I mean, to like these ones have little peppers growing, which you can pull off the little peppers or fruiting flowering, but it's not going to help as much as topping it. So topping it's kind of the first thing I wanted to talk about. So this is something that scared me a lot. And this is a good example. So this one's been topped. Let me grab, mm, hasn't it? it? Yep, right? Yeah. Or is it not been? This one's not been topped. Oh, okay. Which one's been topped? This one's been topped. And this one, right? Um, that one I did cut back, yeah. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell. So here's a one that's been topped. I guess this one hasn't, but it looks like it to me. Um, In fact, I can probably top that one. And this one has not. Um, it, you know, I need to top it. Okay. So this will be one we'll top then. My examples weren't too great. Sorry about all this. What we're talking, excuse me. So what are we talking about, about topping them? Just so. Okay. Sorry. If we were over at the table, it'd be a little easier. But So by topping it, so we've got the plant, it's grown. We've had it under the lights. It's been going and hardening and all that. You want it to be about six to eight inches long before you top it. So about six to eight inches. This is probably a little bit long, but maybe. All right. And so when you're topping it, what are we looking for? Um, so you're just looking for a healthy plant, but you're just going to top. I mean, it looks scary. It looks like you're just killing the plant. Um, but you're not really looking for anything in particular other than it being healthy and you're cutting off the main stem. And you're going how many third nodes you said, right? I, I get, I just do that. It's not something you have to do, but it's just something for me that okay. I do because it makes me nervous to like some people cut them way down here, which you can do, but like you freak out when we chop them <laughs> because yeah. they look like you're just killing them. So I give myself the third note. So one, two, um, three. So you can see there were, I don't know how, let me show the camera because I'm not using the other ones. So these little leaves I've actually cut off, but that's the first little node or nodule. So you can see there, that's where the leaves come out of. And then the second and then the third. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut above that. Yeah. So the right up just above it. And you always cut at a slant. And a slant. And she took the top off, and that's scary. That looks like you're getting rid of a, a ton of the plant, but. You are, but you're encouraging it to not go up. You're encouraging it to grow out. So, with pepper plants, you'll, and with tomatoes and all the others, but you're going to, and I'll talk about tomatoes in a minute, but you're going to get um, the little stems that come out in between. And those are going to actually, with the peppers, you want that right? Those are going to sprout off and they're going to, what it's going to do is create two uh, little parts and then that's going to sprout. It's going to bush. And so it'll, it'll, it'll help the plant to bush out. Um, and it, it scares me every time I see it, but that's going to give us a lot more pepper. So this one is the Zapotec jalapeno. The first time I did it, uh, Matt came in and thought somebody broke all of the Yeah, I, I was like, oh no, all of our peppers. Let's see. So this one that's been topped, Oh no, this, this, one's, this one more. doesn't have a, oh, I didn't label this one, shoot. I think this one was trimmed, but I don't think it was chopped because the middle, but, so you want to cut from the, from the main stem. Okay, so you're going to, okay, so we'll top it again. Why don't you find a good example, since I didn't, of one that's been topped. There. Well, that was the one I gave you. Okay. This one? This one? Yeah. What, do we have a good example, one that's been topped that has started growing though? Oh, no, I just did them. Um... Okay, so she just topped them. So we're not going to have a great example. But basically, that's going to encourage it to bush out. And so all in between, that's going to spread. So we got, let's see, this one is a Hungarian yellow. 
This one's a Zapotec jalapeno. I think this one was a cayenne. And remember, Zapotec. Awesome. Anyways. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for my guest spot. Yes. All right. Bye. Hey, Steve's in here. Hey, Steve. Good to see you. You can root the top, they're saying, Buster says. What? So I knew you could do that with tomatoes, and I was actually going to talk about that in my next thing here. Buster's saying you can root these. Huh. You want to try? You can, yeah. Let's try. We'll, we'll do one. I'm just going to stick it in the... What I'm going to do is this until I have time after the stream. And we will find out. With tomatoes, I know you can. And so that's the next thing I was actually going to talk about here. Oh, I'm jumping ahead. Sorry, my brain's a little scattered tonight. Um, it's kind of all over the place. So I know Spicy Mom actually mentioned this already. But um, one of the things I want to talk about is with the peppers, we'll top. There's some other plants you do that too with um, to help them bush out. Some you don't want to do that with. But also she had already mentioned, but I want to show here. A lot of times when the plants are at this stage, we've uh, they've been under the lights. We've started hardening them. Um, they're not real tall and lanky because of the how we've kept the lights real close. But they're going to start getting little flowers or little fruits. That's what they're starting to want to do. Now, when I first started gardening, I got real excited. And I was uh, like, oh, man, we're going to have some fruit real quick early in the season. And that's not what you want, especially at this stage. At this stage, what we need to be focusing on is the wind that I hate. Uh, strengthening those stems. That's what it's good for. So I don't want to give it too much wind, but we do that with fans and different positions in the greenhouse. Um, the light's very important. The temperature, so moving it from indoor to outdoor to harden them off, um, topping them. And it really wants to focus on growing the roots and the base of the plant, getting a nice sturdy start. And so we don't want any of that energy going into little flowers or little fruits right now. So another thing I'll do on a, with all these I need to go through. Let me find a good example. That's a tomatillo. Well, there's a good one. So here's a tomatillo. And this has a, if you can see it, a little bud there going. And so I'm going to pop that off. And that's just because I do not want that energy going into that right now. Let me see here. Okay. Let me find another plant for the next part. There's one. All right, first of all, my chickens are being quiet right now, which I'm happy. No one's happy today. The chickens are mad because of the way it's way too windy. They weren't able to go outside. They've been going out in their cages and hardening a little bit. They're getting bigger. There's six chickens in this room right now, so they are going insane. Uh, with their small little brooders and they're ready to get outside. But uh, I still got to wait a couple weeks till after that frost and all for them too. All my plants are in here. Nothing went out to the greenhouse just because of that wind. It, it actually, I have to do some repairs on my greenhouse. Um, so none of the plants are happy, but we're in here. All right, here's a tomato. Now this one, it doesn't look like it has any flowers or anything like that. Tomatoes, you don't want to talk. So if you cut that growing top off, you're either not going to get a lot out of your tomato plant. Hey, Bob, good to see you. Or you're going to end up killing it. So like we did with the peppers, even though this looks dead and that was very scary to do, um, topping the peppers is good. That's going to let it bush out, give you a lot more peppers. Um, and then picking off the fruits. Tomatoes, you don't want to top. Tomatoes get a little tricky because you have two, three different types of tomato plants, really. You're going to have determinate, indeterminate, and then a hybrid between the two. So this here's a Grappoli. This is actually a good example. Grappoli de Innervino. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but this is a good example of a kind of a hybrid. So you're going to have your determinants. Now, determinate tomatoes, the ones that's going to grow up, it bushes out. You're going to get a very determinate amount of tomatoes off of that plant. That's all it's going to give you it kind of is more of a big bush one. Then you're going to have your indeterminates. Indeterminate tomatoes are the ones that vine. So that's like your cherry tomatoes, those types of ones. They're going to grow up. They vine all over the place, and you'll get lots of tomato, cherry tomatoes or whatever it is off each one. Now, where you're going to want to do with both, and I'll talk about this is a hybrid. But it, what the hybrid does is it grows. It's more of a determinate, but it will vine. It's kind of tricky. Anywho. So where I showed you on the pepper plants, I dropped that top, 
where they start sprouting right there in the little crux and the in little in between. And that's what we want for the pepper plants. So they bush out and create a lot of fruit. The tomato plants are a little bit different. So these ones you'll see there, they're growing right in the crux too. But these are what are called suckers because they're going to suck the energy from the plant. Now the suckers, you can let them get a little bit bigger and pop them off and you can grow them. Like, uh, just like, uh, uh, who, who was it that said that? Buster said that with the peppers, but you can take them off and actually plant them and grow them. Um, if you let them go, they're going to vine out, kind of create another top almost and uh, fruit off of that. You're, what's going to happen though, if you just let that go, you'll get vine all over the place. It's not going to give the biggest, juiciest fruit, your best fruit or most fruit because there's so much energy kind of going all over. So what I'm going to do is go on these tomato plants and I just pull off these suckers. So you go up, get any of them that are in the little in-between areas, any leaves that are kind of dying, I'll prune off. This is the top. This is not a sucker. If you pop the top off, this is a problem we had last year with Farmer Casey, something he learned. And I taught him how to get the suckers. So he got real excited and would go through the garden and pull the suckers off. You have to do it all throughout the year. And uh, that way you keep the one main really good vine with really nice fruit on it. And we just do multiple plants. But uh, he started pulling off the tops, thinking that was a sucker. So this right here is your growing top. You don't want to top a tomato plant again. If you top it, you're not going to get good results at all. The lights I'm actually using back here um, is these ones here are just LED lights from Home Depot. They're, they are full spectrum, yeah. And so I can actually switch them in between... Um, vegetative phase or growing phase. So right now they're full spectrum for grow phase. Um, that's best for them. I also keep them real low and adjust them. So I want them just a few inches above the light. Now with LEDs, they're not getting a lot of height, uh, a lot of um, heat off of them, but they can still scorch the plant. So I keep them up just above it. You want to keep them really close. So that way the plants don't get really lanky. Otherwise they will. Um, these though, I wish I could show you. Let me see if I can get my camera here. Hey, Syke, good to see you. No, okay. So the problem is my phone just decided after days of trying to get it to work on uploading my footages, uh, just decided about five minutes before the stream to do it. So I can't use that to show you. Um, but the lights I really just use for the new starts. These ones are all in the hardening phase. They have been for almost two weeks. And so that means every morning I take them out to the greenhouse and the greenhouse isn't warm enough to sustain them through the evenings right now. So every evening they come back in. In the greenhouse, they're getting a fan. Um, they also get some air circulation in there. So they move around. That creates a nice sturdy stem. See, part of hardening. Um, and, so, and so that's the light they're getting. In that greenhouse, it's really intense light and heat. And so they, they are staying good height. Um, we're about two weeks off from this going into the ground. All right, let me set that aside. Let me check comments and ask if anyone has any questions. Look like we do have a few people in here. You can pull bottom leaves off the system. Yeah, plant deeper. Man, Buster, you're on it. So I actually have a video I did of this last year of planting tomato plants. And I'm going to do it again. So let me mention that too. Tomato plants are cool. And, and there's a lot of plants that do this. But I'm going to hold it real close. I don't know if you can see but if you ever look at the tomato uh, plant, you're gonna see like, a, it looks like a fuzz that goes all up and down it and little hairs. And so what I do, and I won't do it at this stage, but when I go to plant the tomato plant, I dig my hole in somewhat of a little trench. Um, so I'll dig a little bit of a trench that goes out to space it from the, the previous one and a little bit deeper than you would think. In the bottom of that, I'm gonna put some sardines, I put a little bit of calcium and a little bit of diatomaceous earth. That's my mixture. Sometimes some coffee grounds, a little bit of dirt, just so the plant's not right on top of it. I'm then going to take my tomato plant and I'm going to clip off any bottom leaves. Um, I would normally, if that was what I was doing, I'd take off this one, probably this one, maybe even this one. And so I'm going to take off all those lower branches and I'm going to sink the tomato plant 
up to about there in the ground. And so what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll lay it almost sideways coming up like this. And it's in, and then I'll bury it up to the top. And so it'll be laying kind of like this and I'm going to start bracing it. So it's not right on the ground and that will start to grow straight up. And what that's going to do is all these little fuzz or hairs along here will start to root. Those will turn into roots. And so you're going to get a really good root structure all up and down here in the ground, kind of sideways, giving it a real nice uh, base. And then that will grow straight up and I'll, I'll trellis it. Even my, um, the terminate plants I trellis, but yeah, good, good, good point there, Buster. So yeah, if you do that with the, your tomato plants and there's a few others too, the tomatillo, I don't know. If, I don't think the tomatillo actually grows that way. I don't know. There's a few others I know, but uh, that do that. So different ways to plant different plants. I am at about 20 minutes. So again, if you're just joining, tonight's stream's not going to be very long. Um, I Everything and anything in the book, to make a long story short, uh, that could happen, kind of happen tonight. So I don't have footage and all that other stuff. Let me check. I'm going to see. All right. Let's see. We are at like 20%. Okay, so I'm, I'm uploading, but I'm at like 20%, so I can't take this camera and show you any of that footage. I was going to show you footage of an art installation in Santa Fe. Me and my younger son visited. We had a, a nice dinner for our birthdays, and then we also did a hike with petroglyphs. So those videos are going to be coming out hopefully tonight. I finally, looks like it's finally uploading, so that's a blessing. And so I'm going to get to that. Um, what we are going to do, though, is I'm going to take the next eight minutes to make it half an hour. Just kind of chat a little bit, answer some questions, and then we're going to end tonight's live stream. I'm going to take about, oh, we'll say 10 minutes. I'm going to take 10 minutes to answer nature's call, to regather myself a little bit, and then I'm going to go live again. That's going to be one of those vertical live streams. And uh, in that stream, I'm going to be setting up a very cool birthday gift I got. It's a Vevor uh, heat press system, the whole thing. So I got the area ready where I'm going to be doing that and I'll go live again for anyone that's curious. That's just going to be kind of a watch me put it together type stream. Our birthday. Our birthday gift. I'm so sorry. Yes. Jen says our birthday gift. <laughs> so basically what that is, is this is going to allow us to make our own merchandise at a price point I like and uh, not have to do all third party. Yes. Thank you. Psych. He says, awesome. Let's see, Bob had a question. Do you add compost in your soil or just mulch and let it water in? So I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I do. Yeah. I do a lot of different stages. I have a very specific seed starter mix. I have a intermed intermediate soil mix, and then I have a soil mix that these, so these ones will all go into one more soil mix. Uh, it's going to be a mixture of the soil they're in now, plus some of the natural dirt soil that we have, uh, sand and native stuff. They'll go in a pot in that. Actually, let me show one of these. That's ready. So this one has a, has compost, uh, my uh, second stage soil mix, and also some of our native soil. And so this little tomato plant here has been pruned of its suckers. It's looking really nice. It's been hardening off. This is another capoli. <clears throat> Once I take them from here and they go into the garden, the soil mixture I use is I have a, a three, three compost or three part compost, I guess. Um, and so what that is, is I have one compost, which is in a little system uh, that spins that has a lot of kitchen scraps. I put a lot of, um, other things like that in there. My goal for that one is to make a not nitrogen, super rich uh, compost for some of those plants that don't need the nitrogen as much or don't care for it as much. Most of the compost that I have comes from garden scraps, you know, plants, weeds, cuttings that we pull off, suckers, things like that. Um, pine shavings that come out of the chicken coop, as well as the cleanings from the chicken coop and quail cleanings. So those composts are, there's two of them. They are extremely nitrogen rich. 
And so th that one composts for a little while. And so everything goes into one compost throughout the whole year. I then let that compost for the year. It moves over for about six to eight months and composts there. It gets real hot and ready to go. From there, I then move that into the yard. Um, in my yard, I do. I want to do a lot of just the native soil, which is mesa sand here where I'm at. It's real just sand pretty much. Um, I do, I keep a lot of that because the plants I have, I want them to be hardy to the conditions here, uh, hopefully. And so a lot of that, but I do mix in peat moss, garden lime, because peat moss can sometimes throw your pH off in the garden. So I do a little bit of garden lime in there to uh, get the pH adjusted. Um, I use a lot of that compost. I use a fish emulsion. We do, um, I do calcium, which comes from bone meal. Oh, I had it sitting here. I don't know where it went. That comes from bone meal and crushed eggshells that I get throughout the year. That will go in the garden. Um, I then mix in, top, I do do some topsoil on top. Um, all that gets mixed in really good. I think I'm missing something. And then we do straw over top. Here we the it gets so windy and, and just arid that the air will suck the moisture right out of our soil here in the Southwest Desert. So I, I do cover everything, as you can see, with, with straw. That helps keep moisture. Also do garden oyas and drip systems and things like that. AJ, Mary, good to see you. So let me see if I got a few comments. And Brooke, good to see you. Welcome, everyone. Your native soil is dirt. Very, very, or yeah, ours either. And when we first moved here, even less. There's like no organic matter. It's sand. Um, I, without divulging too much, I've dug down very, very deep. And it is just mesa sand, very deep down. Um, no organic matter. So I think it's called permaculture. I'm not really sure, but we've been here for six years now, I believe. And the first year or two, we cut down all the plants. I then mixed a bunch. What I did was I took a bunch of gypsum and threw it over the sand, um, just kind of in our dirt on it. It looks like little rocks, but that seeps down, seeps down, and it gets turned up as I'm doing stuff. Helps break up some of any clay that we may have in there. Um, also, I've been running the chickens through everything. They get different parts of the garden and different beds at different times of the year. Um, to mix in the soil, I've been adding a lot of organic matter. Um, this year, I was picking it up and looking, and there's so many worms in it. And it's as long as I don't let it dry out, it just stays so nice. And there's just so much organic. So it takes time, but I've, I've actually built that up a little bit. Hey, Matt, we compost too. I love compost. Compost is great. I like seeing it this time of year steam up when I go to turn it. Hey, Jay, Mary, it's so good to see you. We are doing good. And it's by saying hello to everyone. There we go. Your soil is pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, so hopefully I answered some question there. Um, I'm going to hang out for just a few more minutes. If anyone has any questions about my soil, my planting process, uh, maybe what I'm planting or anything to do with the planting, uh, feel free to leave a question or whatnot. And I will answer those. And then, um, then I'll begin to tonight's second live stream. I'm trying to think if there was anything else about the plants I wanted to talk about. So our last frost date here, I think, is actually April 12th. Um, usually I give it until tax day, about April 15th, before I start planning. I think it's funny because I have a couple people. Well, I have one guy I'm um, giving some plants to, um, and he just, he wants to get it going. And I hear this from a lot of people all the time, actually, at this time of year. They want to get their garden going. They want the plants in the ground now. And they go and they buy them, and they do and they die with that last frost. And I, I try telling people, just wait, just wait, give it a little bit of time, let the plants harden, let them do that and just wait. But people really wanna hop on that. The pest control flowers. Um, part of the side of the plot, so we get really bad winds out here, especially up on the Mesa. I mean, I think it's like 
I think today it said there's up to like 60 mile an hour gusts or more. Anyways, and it was just sustained wind all day. Um, we get a lot of wind here. That is one thing we get, and it will just rip at everything. It shreds any tarp. It Even the tarps with metal ties, it just from constant wind, it will work and either tear through the rivets or, or the metal. Um, so I had to go cut some of those down. The greenhouse lost part of the plastic uh, on one of the sides. So I was, I was able to temporarily staple it. Also, the bottom of the door snapped off because it swung and hit, and I had not brace that with the 45s yet so i gotta do that um not major repairs just a few i was actually really hoping my phone would load because i did put in a small solar system in there well i put in some power in there and got a light let me check my upload progress so if you're just joining yeah it's at like 30 percent um i've been for the last few days i've been trying to upload really cool videos and stuff for this and it just decided to start about five minutes ago. I think the problem was one of the cords, to be honest. I tried everything. I thought it was a phone problem, computer problem. I've been trying everything, and I think it was the cord. Uh, I will fix it. I just didn't have the plants out there because the wind was really whipping through that greenhouse. Um, and then it was shaking the table a lot and these cups aren't very sturdy <laughs> and the plants get pretty top heavy there's a cucumber um so they weren't out there today yeah digging worms out i like to let the chickens go through the compost about this time of year because they'll get any of those really big grubs and stuff i was hoping to do vermiculture this year but there's just so many things i want to start i do not know Yeah, finding worms. You got some marigolds and planted them Wednesday. Oh, got another inch of snow Thursday night. Flower tops laid over. Hope the plants are still alive. Yeah, I'm sorry, Bob. Every year I have that happen. Last year, all of our cold weather crops got wiped out by a freak hail storm. I hope they're okay. I do. Plants can be resilient, though. They can come back, that's for sure. Marigold, though, they are a beautiful plant. I love the flowers. I've grown them. They're a plant I will never grow again. If you guys like them, people, some people love them. They're, they're good for different pest control. Uh, they go everywhere, though. They spread all over. They are beautiful. The reason I stopped growing them is because the chickens. Their uh, seeds are too hard for the chickens and not good for them, but, but they are a cool plant. So you got snow over there. We did not get snow up here. A lot of wind, some rain, but wow, Bob. I think we're going to be going up through your way, I believe. In June, we're going to be go, going camping at the Grand Canyon South Rim. So I believe we go up through your way that's where you get your fishing worms very cool yep <laughs> what's there's a oh man it's probably not a good song what song was that i was listening to a country song i don't know and he's talking about oh, it's one of those don't mess with me type songs he's talking about you'll basically you'll be the compost that feeds the worms that he goes fishing with that makes his dinner i don't know probably not very good but i thought it was kind of funny What I have is great big long worms, I think. And isn't June, I think, is about when Renegade said she was moving, June or July, I think is called uh, night crawlers. Yeah. yeah, I believe and I, I believe they're all good for the garden, I think. I don't know. That's a good question. You got a bit more snow. Wow. So when's your last frost day there, Bob? I know ours is. Is it the same? I'm not sure. So hey, I got 11 people in here and I want to say thank you. Um, I started this stream very frustrated. Uh, none of my, my computer wasn't working. My downloads videos weren't working. My other laptops wasn't working. I had a bunch of problems. I started this stream very frustrated. 
Um, and I decided, you know what, let's just go, let's just go with it. Let's do it. Let's make it work. Uh, my wife hopped in and helped me out. If you missed the beginning of our stream, we did do some planting tips that uh, are excellent. You should catch. She helped me out with that. And then, of course, communication just with you guys is awesome. So um, you guys rock. Yeah, so Bob's at 7,800. So he is uh, yeah, higher up there. They're all good for the garden, Nikki's saying. Okay. You just don't want the cutworms. That's what we get. And we got to get rid of those. Well, you guys rock. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. And um, last frost date. Don't remember, but have been told there's been snow here in early June. So, okay. So just the last frost date. What I consider that is just when it stops going below freezing, uh, below 32. Um, I will... Rule of thumb, I try and plant outside. I like, I would like to do it when the temperature stops dropping below 50 degrees at night. That never happens here. Um, so I shoot for when it stops dropping below about 42. Um, you know, 42 is a good number to pick. It's the answer to, was it love life, the universe and everything? I know I said that wrong. But anyways, uh, so I pick 42. When, the, when it looks like the temperature is going to stop going below 42 at night, that's when I put my plants out. And that always ends up landing about frost date. Yeah, he's over a mile up. He's a, he's a little higher than I am. So I think I, we're at about 60, 65, I think. Bob is high up there. So I will pass by you, huh? Yeah, we are. We're going to go to the Grand Canyon. This is something I've always said, and I thought it was kind of a funny joke. I don't know. I, I heard and I thought it was funny, but... It says only, only parents of boys will ever understand having to say, no, we can't go to the Grand Canyon because I'm afraid you might throw your brother off. I used to joke, now they're a little bit older, so but we're going to take them, we're going to go tank camping. And that should be a ton of fun. Hi today at 36. Hey, Bob, you're cold there. Wow, you're pretty close to uh, sea level, Brooke. I know that Aaron and, and Christina are... I think he's at like 11 miles or something. He said, up. okay, so I'm going to be hopping off here. Uh, appreciate everyone that hopped on. You guys rock. It is a short stream, but I'm going to come back for another live. Uh, you may have to look for it. I don't know if it'll notify you or not. Oh, let me check. I got to check something because I got to use my phone for it. Possibly. Maybe not. All right, let me check my progress. Wow, 35%. Okay, so let me think here for a minute. I can't use my, I was going to use my phone, and we're going to do another live and shoot setting up this, this heat press me and my wife got for a birthday gift. Asta, hang on one sec, Bob. Okay, you guys rock. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to be back in 10 minutes. I'm not going to do the vertical stream. It's going to be through StreamYard because I'm going to have to use this camera. So you may get notified in 10 minutes. I'll be on live. For anyone that wants to watch me set up this um, Vev Vevor heat press system, really cool thing uh, that my brother got me and my wife as a gift for our birthdays. And so we're going to make some team stuff for the kiddo. We're going to be producing some merchandise and other cool things. So if you guys are interested in just watching me set that up, uh, join back in, in, in 10 minutes here. All right, cool. Mr. Landfill, we'll see you. Internet is acting wacky. Mine too. Uh, because of all the stuff going on April 8th. Yeah. So as actually part of what I was going to talk about tonight, I finally got enough of my solar system that I can take one of the one or two of these freezers off online. So I got my three thousand, um, my my three kilowatt, my three thousand watt inverter, and I was going to be doing a little bit of stuff with that tonight. That was what I was waiting on to power these freezers and stuff. Um, that's going to have to be a stream for another time. So I guess stay tuned for that. But I'm in a rush a little bit to get that stuff done. Hey, well, we appreciate you being here, Nikki. We do. 
That's all right. You have a good night, Brooke. I understand. That's why I'm splitting it, not doing the same. So for all of you who are hopping off, thank you very much for popping in and for uh, letting me share some tips with you tonight. It's been good. Um, and then for any of you that are going to be back, we'll see you in 10 minutes. So stay strong, do the things, and either see you in a few minutes or have a good evening.